Alan, you still there? I'm here. Okay. We'll start in one minute, folks. Okay, greetings everyone from the International Trade Center at the Women's Business Development Center in downtown Chicago. Welcome to our generally monthly webinar about international business. Uh, today, we're gonna talk about uh, some banking issues and we're gonna try something different and keep this short and direct and to the point and go for 30 minutes. So uh, as part of that, we're gonna start on time. So. Off we go. All right, and also note at the end that, um, or tomorrow, later today or tomorrow, I'll send everybody uh, the slides. So, okay, today, here we go, exporting, selling in US dollars or local currency, and screen does not advance, so okay. I'm gonna stop and start again. Okay, we're from the, I'm at the Women's Business Development Center in Chicago. Briefly, let me tell you about it. Uh, I will condense the, uh, the introductions today for those of you that have sat through this in the past. The Women's Business Development Center has been around since 1986, very well-known, well-established nonprofit that uh, supports uh, women's business activities all around the Midwest. We've got offices in Chicago, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, St. Louis, among others. So, And I'm the International Trade Center housed within the Women's Business Development Center. And I work with uh, companies both inside the WBDC client base and outside around the Chicago area to uh, assist with international exporting activity. So that can be anything from helping with uh, creating a, an export plan or talking about strategy to more specific activities like talking about uh, channels and market strategies, doing some research for companies to identify which countries to go to, to identify its potential distributors in those countries. And uh, also, I'm, I'm a one-stop shop for on things like shipping and logistics and payments and grants and things like that. Um, my background's 30 years in the private sector, doing international business, doing exporting for different American companies. And now I'm using that expertise and that experience uh, for the last two years or so at the ITC to advise companies on how to do it. So... Um, I want to make note that I've got one foot in the uh, Illinois Department of Commerce and Econo Economic Opportunity called, called the Illinois Office of Trade and Investment. I work with Closely that's got a global network with six offices around uh, the world. We work with both uh, the Illinois Global Export and as well as other partners, governmental partners. So look at the International Trade Center as a gateway, as a resource to you to connect with the uh, SBA or the US Department of Commerce or the XM Bank or the Illinois Department of Commerce people. And uh, as a one-stop shop again, to answer questions or connect you with people who can help you. So from there, uh, there's my contact info. If you're interested in the International Trade Center talking about exporting, best to just make a note of that email there and um, let me know and we'll set up a time to talk and see again, whether you're just starting on that export journey or uh, maybe you're exporting already and you're, what other, what's the next country to go to or you're having a shipping issue or a documentation issue, uh, let me know. So today we're gonna do this mini webinar again. Um, one of your first decisions when you do go international is decide if you're gonna sell in US dollars or the local currency. Okay, such as, am I going to sell in Canadian dollars going to Canada or Mexican pesos, et cetera? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of each approach going uh, using dollars or the local currency? And what tools are available to help you with that? Today, we've got Alan Lane Mercia from a First American Bank who's uh, 
an expert on this topic. I've known I've known about Alan for a long time, and I know he's um, he's 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 been a speaker on this topic numerous times. So he's going to present, and uh, again, we'll go thirty minutes, and we'll have some Q and A at the end. Um, make note: the next ITC webinar next month will be on uh, from the XM Bank talking about credit insurance or how you can sell on open account internationally and protect your receivables. That's a topic we'll hit for 30 minutes next month. So from there, I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to you. Ellen, hang on. I'm out. You should go on. Okay. <clears throat> Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Let me get this part where Here are my slides. Okay, uh, those should be up now. Um, I see it, right. So great, so hi everyone. <clears throat> Bill, thanks for having me. Um, so I am Alan Lee Morsi, as he said, from the um, uh, First American Bank. We are um, both an X SBA and an XM preferred lender uh, when it comes to export uh loans but okay why are mine not advancing now there we go um but we also uh deal with the the whole thing with the currency and how you're going to be selling and so forth so one of the problems with selling uh internationally is you know obviously the question the bill asks what what currency are you going to sell at so you want to know how much you're getting paid for your goods your customer wants to know how much they are paying for those goods so your accounting is in US dollars, their accounting is in their local currency. <clears throat> so there's gonna have to be an, an exchange between the two. And then the issue is, which one do you use? And then who knows what's going on between you, them, exchange rates, exchange rates changing, so forth. So there is this weird paradox. A lot of uh, pundits like to talk about the importance of a strong dollar. Um, however, Weirdly, that's actually, uh, it, it's an indication that the US economy is doing great. But if you're exporting, it's actually a problem because that makes your goods more expensive to your overseas customers. If you're selling in dollars, you're assured of how much you're gonna be paid. Your customer could be paying more or less than they plan depending on um, what the, um, exchange rates change because exchange rates change every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Um, and if there's a long lead time, how are they gonna know? Um, you know, it, it's not unusual at all for it to take um, two months from the time that you get a order for you to, to ship it and get it over to them. And then how long does it take them to pay you after that point? Um, we have some customers that six months is a short lead time for them. So, you know, we, you, we have no idea. Nobody has any idea what exchange rates are going to be six months, a year from now, year and a half from now sometimes. Um, so um, you might lose your competitive advantage um, if you're competing internationally because of the changes in exchange rates, um, especially if you're selling only exclusively in dollars. Um, <clears throat> if you have a line of credit based on your export uh, receivables or purchase orders, your bank may require that you have those payments be in dollars. And the dollar is a standard international. <clears throat> but you can sell in local currency. Um, your customers are very sure of what they will pay. Um, however, you could suddenly lose money if the value of of the dollar rises relative to that currency. Um, you could also suddenly gain unexpected returns if the dollar devalues during that same time frame. Um, because of current volati volatility, the fact that markets are just uncertain, you know, there's no guarantees, there are absolutely no guarantees. Um, so I wanna use an example um, of dollars to euros, uh, just because euros is a lot of different countries that you can sell to with that. Um, so let's say that uh, the current exchange rate is um, one dollar to um, 0.9 euros. So if you sold in euros, that fifty thousand dollars would then suddenly be forty-five thousand euros. 
However, if the dollar appreciates, so now it's <clears throat> $1 to uh, 0.95 euros, and uh, it's dominated uh, in euros, the seller is going to, seller you, is going to receive um, a lot less. You're going to receive um, 47368 instead of the 50000 that you were hoping to get. And that's a, a difference of um, 5.2%, which can be significant, if, especially if, if your uh, profit margins aren't um, you know, e excessive. Um, but if you do the same thing and you sell in dollars, uh, your customer originally would have been paying the 45,000 euros, but there's now a new exchange rate again. And now they're paying um, 47,500 euros for the same thing. And that's a 5.5% increase for them. Um, because of the time lag of these kinds of uh, sales, <clears throat> not the least of which is shipping times. So we all know about the issues with shipping. Um, it's been on the news. Uh, people who never even heard about or even thought about shipping suddenly found, found out about it this past fall. Um, you know, that's a, that's a big issue. And then um, exchange rates, again, they're very volatile. They can change at a drop of a hat. However, you do have some options that you should consider. Um, one that some people choose to do is uh, upfront payment. Like you go ahead and you get the money now when they place the order. Um, you're assured of payments. Uh, unfortunately, your customer does not have any recourse if you don't provide the goods as uh, agreed. Uh, it is less advantageous for them, and it's also less competitive for you. So I use the example of euros. Most country, most places in Europe, you really need to sell to them on terms. So if you're asking for payment up front, they're going to say, you know, hey, that's cool, like your product, but you know, I think I'm going to go elsewhere where I can get it on terms. Another option is a letter of credit. Um, so you're assured of payment because they give you a guaranteed letter of credit. Um, as long as there's proper documentation. Um, the disadvantage, however, for your customer is that they have to upfront those, uh, they have to put those funds, funds up at the beginning. Uh, you can also sell on an open account, just the same as you would sell to your domestic customers. <clears throat> you can just provide them trade credit, just like you get trade credit from your suppliers. That is more advantageous for the customers and it is more competitive for you. Like I said, in uh, Europe, you really have to do business on open accounts. Um, also, keep in mind, just because a buyer is from another country, it does not make them a great, greater credit risk necessarily than your local customer. Um, many foreign buyers are actually more credit worthy than some of your uh, local customers in the US. Another option you can consider is, uh, so the spot transactions. So spot transactions, that's basically just Selling dollars in the moment. <clears throat> so you got to change your customer. Your customer has to change their currency into dollars. And then they can do that, you know, just on the spot. If you sell in your current in their currency, you got to change your currency, uh, your dollars into their currency. Same thing. You just do that on the spot. Um, again, you're you're at risk for the volatility there. You can do a thing called a forward contract. So a forward contract allows you to buy or sell a specific amount of the foreign currency at an agreed upon exchange rate at a future date. So in the example of the 45,000 euros, um, you can actually set up a contract that you're gonna buy those um, euros or sell those euros at, um, at a specific date, say six months in the future when you get paid. So if you're selling in euros and you get the 45,000 euros, you can then turn around and sell them for a specific price against the dollar. And then that way you're guaranteed of how much you're gonna get paid. Um, it is a good hedge against the risk of the foreign exchange because of the rapidly changing global economy. Uh, you lock in your, in your rate and you remove that, um, that risk of the, the currency fluctuations. Um, it does require you, however, to buy the, um, euros or whatever currency you're buying uh, or sell in whatever currency you're selling um, at, at that rate, regardless of what the spot rate is. So if you, you do it as a 
forward contract based on the idea that the euro is going to go down uh, relative to the dollar, then if it actually goes up, then you kind of lose out on that bit. Um, you also have currency options. <clears throat> so it's an opportunity, but not an obligation to buy or sell the currency at a future date at a predetermined exchange rate. Um, so that gives you more flexibility um, in the event of, mark of um, changes in the exchange rates to your favor, allows you to let the option expire if exchange rates are more in your favor. Um, and then you can conduct. Um, but, you, but if exchange rates aren't in your favor, then you can go ahead and use that option. <clears throat> There's also, uh, so the two that I just described are on specific dates. Like this is the date you have to buy or sell the currency. Um, you can also do a window, which gives you, um, you know, the option to buy between certain dates. Um, it is more flexibility, but it's greater cost. So um, if you're going to have that, you include in the contract the options and the cost and in the uh, contract price or the invoice. So think about um, these options are going to be anywhere from, say, 1% to 3%, depending on what you use. So keep that in mind. But in the example I gave you, that was a 5% change. So 3% is a lot less than 5%. So sometimes it's worth it to do that 3% uh, option with a window and uh, then you can <clears throat> uh, be assured of that payment. However, you might wanna uh, think about increasing the price a little bit to include uh, the cost of the transaction because it, you just consider that a cost of doing business um, internationally. It's just part of what you do. Um, with banks, obviously we have a banking service and you wanna make sure that the bank you're working with offers these things for you if you're selling internationally. Clearly, the primary way that we send, uh, we get money internationally is wires. So both in and out wires internationally and how quickly those go through, you're going to want to know that your, your bank offers those options. Um, also, whether or not you can work on the foreign exchange. So in a, for example, if your customer is sending to your account in their currency, can your bank just simply turn that around and change it over to dollars? Um, and also do they offer the options of the contracts, uh, the forward contracts, the windows, and so forth. Um, also, foreign checks. This does not happen a lot, but um, it is possible that you'll get these um, and just check with your bank to see whether or not that's something they offer. Obviously, wires are preferable and much more common. Um, a lot of banks now offer um, online um, exchange rate options. So you can actually um, buy those options, those forward contracts, those windows, you can buy them online um, very easily with a lot of banks. So you should shop around and see which banks offer you those options because a lot of times you can connect them straight to your accounts and you know exactly what you're getting into, what your costs are and so forth. And then the banks that offer that also have <clears throat> um, a trade finance desk that you can call and talk to somebody about specifics if you need to. That was really fast and furious, Bill. I did not know it was going to go that fast. <laughs> it's all right. We don't, all right. You know, we're not going to milk this. We'll just, we're going to deliver the info. <laughs> Here, here's my comment that, that I look at this from a, um, I'm look this from a sales point of view, right? Because that, that's, that's what I did. And I'll, I'll, and, and, I look at it. The, I look at this from a competitive point of view, as a, as my company. So I think you've got to. And the good news and the bad news is, okay, you choose to sell in dollars. That's simpler for you, but that's more complicated for your customer overseas. And and uh, and from the competitive point of view, if your competitor down the street has done this work and sells in the local currency, you're at a competitive disadvantage. So. It may be worth it to, to be more customer friendly and easier to work with by engaging in some of these tools to uh, sell in the local currency. I think, I think that's the, that'll, that'll uh, expand your opportunities. And then, if, as Alan described, there are tools to uh, mitigate the risk involved. 
All right, let's see if we've got any comments or questions. Does uh, First American Bank offer future forward contracts for purchase? Uh, yes, we do. Now, I will tell you, we are a <clears throat> we're a local bank. Um, we're a large local bank. We're we're um, the largest privately held bank in Illinois. But uh, we do have uh, to use a correspondent bank for some of the uh, contracts because we work with them on the foreign exchange. However, we do our own foreign exchange as well. That is uh, something we offer, and we do offer it as uh, online along with the accounts. Okay. Hold on, let's see if there's anything else. It doesn't appear we have anything else. You know what? That'll be it. That's it. We don't have to go any further. We're going to deliver the info and move on. Everybody's busy. Um, me, I, Alan and I were talking about two or three or four hour Zoom calls uh, previously. Uh, that's not what we want to do today. So there's almost 25 minutes and oh. we're in and out. We're done. So, there's okay, everybody. Yeah. There's a possibility of marketing on the exchange market. There's a few more questions here, Bill. Okay, I see them. Possibly of marketing on the exchange. I don't know what that means. Do you? Uh, I'm not, no, I'm not really sure what that means. Can we see if we can uh, unmute her and get her to explain? I don't know how to do that. Manuela, can you type uh, in a bit more? And we'll, uh, we'll see what Dan asks. And Dan says, I have a question. So yeah, so Dan, if you could type that too, please. What is the most common operation? What is the most common operation? Lauro, what is the most common operation credit? Is there an exchange possible? Lauro, what do you mean? <laughs> What's the most common operation credit? Oh, got you. So people who are new to um, <clears throat> selling internationally tend, oh, to, um, tend to want to be paid in advance. Um, the, the international market, though, requires you operate on credit, that you offer credit to, um, to, to your customers. So that's very common. Okay, let's see. Oh, would you have to have with a margin account? Is that what she's asking? Okay, got it. Um, you don't necessarily have to open a margin account, <clears throat> um, but you you. You may have to, um, you would have to have an operating account uh, with the bank that you're doing the, um, the contracts with though. And then as to hard currency or soft currency countries, again, dollar is the international standard. And the reality is, is the majority of our customers do sell in dollars. However, there are times when they do find it advantageous, especially with places like Europe and Canada, they find it advantageous to sell in the local currency. What would be an example of a non-hard currency then? You know, I'm thinking... <laughs> what, Vietnam or something? That's, I'm thinking Vietnam. I'm thinking... <clears throat> the problem with like China, China, you know, they they uh, manipulate their, their exchange rates. So that's always a problem. Although I will say China is very happy to buy and sell in dollars. So that's not an issue. Um, you know, I think a lot of countries in Latin America, their currencies are extremely volatile. Um, so, you know. But they all, I mean, everywhere that I've sold in 60 some countries, they all had access to dollars. So so that's one thing. So it makes your life easier, certainly to uh, when you're selling in dollars and whether it's Vietnam or Peru or, or, or any place like that, those importers have access to dollars. Yeah, Jamila, we'll send that to you. How about, all right, how about the further definition of hard hard currency, Alan? See, I always think of hard currency as, as currencies like dollars, euros. 
um, the ones that you know that they're going to be pretty stable. Um, you know, that's that's what I think of as, as hard currency. Yen too is also um, pretty hard currency. Like you know, they're going to be pretty stable. Um, and so, you know, like like you said, I mean, there are some countries that even they have dollarized banking accounts. Um, I know certain countries within Latin America and even Asia and Africa, you can actually open up a dollar and open up a bank account in dollars and just keep it in dollars. <clears throat> um, I feel like we got suddenly. Cryptocurrency, I will have to say with regard to cryptocurrency, I don't have a lot of experience with that in terms of um, using it uh, for exchanges. Um, to be honest with you, I see cryptocurrency the same way I see the stock market. Um, it is just as volatile um, and it's more of, a, of, a, of an investment as opposed to like actually doing exchanges um, like dollars to euros or dollars to pesos um, kind of thing. So um, that's, that's my answer to that one. You know, I saw an interesting one there, Terrence, about, okay, you know, uh, we're, we're getting into a, 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 a volatile environment, right? Exchange rate, um, interest rates rising and inflation and things like that. Uh, to me, the answer to that is, yes, yeah, so use these tools because volatility is coming and these tools are to mitigate the volatility and, and, and cover your risk. How do, how do you see that, Alan? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, I think that's why it's very timely that we did this because the idea of having to use those, um, let me, um, um, stop sharing. Um, using those tools, your options, your contract, your forward contract, your, your option windows and so forth will help mitigate that volatility. Um, you know, right now, as you're, you're right, everything's crazy. Um, where we've got um, interest rates uh, are starting to go up, inflation is starting to hit, and that's going to affect your exchange. Obviously, it's like instantly going to affect your your exchange rates. Um, so definitely use those. Um, <clears throat> I like Dan's question. Dan's um, Dan's question is interesting. It's like if they're buying and selling from China. Um, should we pay US dollars on the yuan based on the payment date or based on the transaction date of the contract? Um, for, the, for China, since they manipulate their interest rates, um, my advice is selling dollars to China. Dude, I, I would not um, sell in the yuan um, unless you're absolutely required to do that, but I have not seen that. Um, all of our customers who buy and sell from China, everything is in dollars 100% of the time, including the letters of credit that they get from China, which China is quite willing to work with letters of credit. Um, those are um, in, in dollars, so they're denominated in dollars. So I would not work with the Yuan at all. I would, I would demand dollars from China. You know what, I, I'll, I'll, I'm thinking back of almost 25 years of, of uh, sales to China, same in dollars and and uh, the RMB was just too murky, right? Too, it's really too, almost too risky. So in, in China's case, yeah, I think dollars is a good move. Yeah, um, so Manuel is asking about purchasing options. Um, yeah, so the, the options that I talked about, so if you buy, a, do a forward contract, a forward option, uh, option window, all of those have a cost and you just tie it directly to the transaction. Um, like I said, it's anywhere from one to 3%, depending on on the amount and and the currency that you're using. So let's say euro, you know, fifty thousand in euro. Is that going to is it going to be on the high end or the low end of that? That's going to be on the much lower end of that because low risk. Yes, exactly. Or less volatility. Okay. You know what? I think that'll do it, right? Yeah, and we're right at the thirty minute mark, Bill. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, everyone, we'll send the slides out to you. Thanks for joining us today. And um, hopefully you can join us next time in February. Thanks, all. Thanks, Alan. We'll catch up. Okay, thanks a lot, Bill. Right, Thank bye. you, everyone. Take care.